He came walking across as though he just walked out of the Sahara Desert. The big Abaya, big beard. But subhanAllah, the first words he said were, G'day mate, how are you going? <laughs> if only he had the can of VB, it would have been perfect. <laughs>
I looked over and I saw this brother, you probably know this guy, this is Abu Hamza, he's come here and he's lectured a few times. Um, SubhanAllah, I call him Abu Da'an because uh, he's got a very large beard, mashallah. He came walking out towards me and I thought, today I'm about to die. <laughs> this is the last day of my life. I'm a dead man. I'm a white boy in Leblayant. What am I going to do here? I'm dead. He came walking across as though he just walked out of the Sahara Desert. Big abaya, big beard. But subhanAllah, the first words he said were, G'day mate, how you going? If only he had the can of VB, it would have been perfect. SubhanAllah, I was very taken aback by his, uh, by his welcoming nature. Um, as Aussies, I guess now, I don't want to offend any Australians here, but my, my upbringing is from a, a country upbringing. Um, my parents raised me as an atheist. They were raised as Christians. They were dragged along to church every Sunday, and they hated every minute of it. So as soon as we were born, they drummed it into our heads that when you die, you're worm food. That's it. There's no afterlife. There's no God. It's all rubbish. So I was raised as, a, as an atheist. So when I walked across and, uh, and, and I, I saw Abu Hamza and he was talking to me um, in a very polite fashion, which I was very thankful for because I was sure I'd seen him on the 5 o'clock news hijacking a plane the day before. <laughs> now, Aussies are hospitable, don't get me wrong, but Lebos are the most hospitable people I've ever come across. And as the brother Hamza was saying, these brothers were making me cups of tea, you know, and I honestly needed to keep going to the toilet every five minutes. They just kept putting tea in front of me, biscuits. I'd never seen anything like it. And I think to some degree I kept coming back for the biscuits, but also for the religion. <laughs> So when I sat down with these brothers, I actually started asking questions. I asked all the questions that I've asked of, uh, of the, the priests, of the pastors, of, um, of my friends. And subhanAllah, the, the thing that really struck me is that every time I asked the question, they wouldn't just answer. They would pick up a Qur'an and they would say, read this bro, read this. And there was the answer, every single time. And I would ask another question, you know, you know, the hard questions, not the easy questions. Why do women have to wear the scarf? Why, why the, the hijab? How come I can have four wives and she can't have four husbands? You know, I wanted to know all the tough questions, which is the first questions I guess you ask when, uh, when you come across Islam. But lo and behold, they kept on answering the questions with the Qur'an, not from their own opinion. And I got frustrated with this. And I actually said to one of the brothers, because by this stage I'd, I think I'd been going there for about a couple of weeks, there was always a few brothers there when I went. And I said to one of the brothers, I said, you know, what's your opinion on the matter? Why won't you give me your opinion? And one of the brothers turned to me one day and said, how can I have an opinion when this is the Word of God? SubhanAllah, I remember that really hit me. So I asked them if I could take a Qur'an home. And I didn't say I was going to use it to chock up the couch or anything like that. I said I was going to respect the book. So they, I took it home. I started reading it. Um, what I found was, while reading it, it wasn't as though I was reading a story. It was though I was reading someone commanding me, you know, someone giving me guidance. And uh, one night I decided to really try and get this spiritual mood happening. And I'm sure you, probably some of you have heard this story before, so I apologize. Um, I lit a candle. <laughs> I had the window open, I had the curtains drawn, you know, I was trying to get that really spiritual feeling. It was a nice summer night in Melbourne, as summer as it can get in Melbourne. And uh, I was sitting there thinking, this is it, you know, this is the night. I'd been, you know, investigating all the spiritual proofs, all the scientific proofs about the fact that the mountains are the pegs, about, you know, how, how the, the embryo develops inside, uh, you know, the woman, all these amazing proofs, but I still needed that little push. It's like I was on the edge of a cliff, I was ready to jump, I just needed a push. So I was sitting there, it was very quiet. I was reading Quran, and I stopped. I said, Allah, this is my moment. This is the time I'm about to jump into Islam. All I need is just a sign. Just a little sign, nothing huge, maybe a bolt of lightning. <laughs> Maybe half the house could fall down or something, you know, just, just small. It's small for you, man. You, you created the earth. Come on. So I sat there. I was waiting for the candle to start lighting up to four meters high like in the movies. And I go, okay, go. And subhanAllah, nothing, absolutely nothing happened. 
I was really disappointed to be honest. <laughs> so I sat there and I said, Allah, this is your chance. <laughs> I'm here. I'm not going nowhere. I'll give you another chance. Okay, maybe you're busy. You know, I know it's daytime over the other side of the world. There's a whole lot of stuff going on. Maybe this time it could just be like a car backfiring. You know, something small. All right, the half the house, the candle. Let's forget that. A bird could fart outside. I don't care. Just anything. <laughs> so I said, okay, go. And subhanAllah, absolutely nothing happened. And I mean, I couldn't have even said, oh, that was it. That, that creep just then in the wall, that was it. Absolutely nothing happened. I was really disappointed. I was gutted. I, I was sitting there thinking, this is it. You know, this was my last chance, Islam. And, and I really, I haven't found it. I pulled back the Qur'an, I, I turned back to where I was reading. SubhanAllah, the very next verse on the next page. For those of you who ask for signs, have we not shown you enough already? Look around you, look at the stars, look at the sun, look at water. These are the signs for the people of knowledge. SubhanAllah. I threw the doona over my head and I, I pretended I was asleep. I was that scared because I couldn't believe how arrogant I'd been to want my own specific sign when all the signs had been there for me all along. The fact that we have this world, the fact that there is this creation, these are the signs for all of us. The next day I decided this is it, I'm becoming a Muslim. I've been investigating uh, Islam now for probably about six months to be honest. I went in and I said to myself, this is it, I'm going to make sure that I had no idea what I had to say, I had no idea what the words were. It was probably close to Isha prayer, so it would have been, you know, seven, eight o'clock at night. Um, I went in and, and I couldn't believe it, there was about a thousand people at the mosque. I thought, subhanAllah, look at this religion. Look at how strong they are. It was the first night of Ramadan. <laughs> Ramadan Muslims. <laughs> so I sat there and I was very nervous, I must admit. I got up and this person's going to me, you got to say these words, bro. Ash Hadu. I'm going, what? Ash what? <laughs> Can't I just say it in English? Now they say, no, you've got to say it in Arabic. And I thought, looked out over the sea of beards that I could see in front of me and I thought, if I get these words wrong, I'm a dead man. Again, I had this fear, you know. So I was sitting there, I was very scared. I got up and subhanAllah, as soon as I started to say the words, all fear went out of my mind. It felt as though a shower was inside my head and someone had just turned on the cold tap. Felt like I'd been flushed clean. I said the words and I wasn't expecting so many brothers to come up and yell Takbir Allahu Akbar and start kissing me and hugging me. Now I'd never been kissed by that many men in my life. <laughs> But it was a beautiful day, I must admit. And that day was the day that I had more brothers than I could ever, uh, ever imagine, more sisters as well. But um, I guess since that day I've never looked back. My family, I think, initially were very worried that uh, I was going to be, I guess, a little bit weird towards them. That they thought that I was going to break out the AK-47s and the grenades. Uh, but they realised, I think, soon that, that this religion was actually making me a better person. Prior to Islam, you're not going to believe it, I had a mohawk. <laughs> I did. I had, uh, I'm not going to show you any photos. Um, I had army greens. I had the Metallica t-shirt. I had the cherry docks. I was shocking, right? I thought I looked great, but I looked terrible. And alhamdulillah, ever since then I look as good as I do now. No, don't laugh, please. <laughs> But my parents were the first people to actually say to me once, which really um, amazed me. They said, my father actually asked me for the Qur'an recently, which I was really happy about. Um, I always thought he'd be one of the hardest people to, to work on. But uh, he said to me, ever since you've been a Muslim, you've been a better person. You're more reliable. <laughs> I can count on you to come and pick me up if my car breaks down.